Now that we have a state space model to work with, the next step in reaching a transfer function is going to be taking the Laplace transform and linearizing it. And uh, I'm not a great mathematician, I'll be the first to admit it, so uh, it can sound a little bit daunting at first, but uh, once we walk through it, hopefully it'll make some more sense. And commonly, the kinds of systems that we will be analyzing, uh, especially the kinds of systems you will get on a test as an engineer, uh, are going to be single input, single output systems because evaluating a 4x4 four four matrix of uh, state variables can be very time consuming and uh, yeah so the professors will typically only ask you about uh, models referred to as single input single output so that's a key vocab word to remember SISO and in this model I will also be assuming that we will have a single state variable x1 and so what I'll do is I'm going to uh, pretend like we arrived at some kind of, uh, from a balance equation, a uh, differential equation resembling this. So we'd have dx1 dt, uh, the time derivative of our first state variable, our only state variable, uh, would be some coefficient times that state variable plus another coefficient times uh, our only input u1. And the keywords to see on an exam or in real life, if your supervisor comes to you and asks you, uh, the keywords are find the transfer function of an output with respect to some input. And so the output in this case will be y. Uh, y is the generic uh, term that we denote our uh, output as. And um, y in this example will be equivalent to x1. And our input here will be u1. And we only have a single input and a single output. And for the sake of consistency, what I will do is I will let this equation uh, be equivalent to dy dt, where y is the output of our system that we are interested in. And so what this uh, question is asking us is essentially to find the Laplace transform of y with respect to the Laplace transform of u, or, or u1 in this example. And Laplace transforms are important uh, mathematical is an important mathematical concept to understand because it allows us to analytically evaluate first order differential equations or uh, multiple order differential equations um, and uh, so having a, a good understanding of them is very important uh, in the topic of process control and uh, so to uh, do that what I'll what we're going to do is take the Laplace transform of uh, this equation here. And so the Laplace transform of dy dt, and uh, there are Laplace transform tables such as Paul's online notes um, that tell you what these values are. Um, there's also uh, the definition of the Laplace transform of some function is equivalent to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus t times s times f of t dt. And so what this does, what taking the Laplace transform does, is it moves you from the time domain into the frequency domain. And in the frequency domain, our differential equations uh, are now algebraic expressions that we can evaluate and then take the inverse Laplace transform of to arrive at uh, solutions to our differential equations 
uh, to make the uh, solution process a lot simpler. And to uh, get on with this example, the uh, definition of the Laplace transform of the derivative of y with respect to t is equivalent to s times Laplace transform of y minus y evaluated at zero. And uh, so this would be the left-hand side of the equation that we have in our uh, SISO system above. And typically, because y is a uh, deviation variable, meaning it's the difference between the steady state or that a value, uh, whatever value you're interested in, minus that value at steady state, we assume our system is initially at steady state. Uh, what that tells us is that this term here is equal to zero. So we can uh, generally cancel those terms. And uh, as we'll note also, because Laplace transforms are linear, uh, just like taking the derivative of something, if we had some function such as in this example, a times x1 plus b times u1, it must be equivalent to a times the Laplace transform of x1 plus b times the Laplace transform of u1. And uh, so definition of being linear is we can move these constants out of the equation as well as add the two uh, terms uh, together later on like we just did. And so if we plug this into here, what we'll have now is s times Laplace transform of y is equivalent to, and uh, recall how uh, the uh, x1 was equivalent to y, so I'll rewrite it as that, plus b times Laplace transform of u, or u1, um, we can now algebraically solve this expression for the Laplace transform of y with respect to u. And so doing that, what we would have is s minus a, times Laplace transform of y is equivalent to b times Laplace transform of u. And I'll let u1 uh, be equal to u. And uh, further simplifying and rearranging this equation, what we find is that the Laplace transform of your output divided by the Laplace transform of your input is equivalent to b divided by s minus a. And this is your transfer function. And uh, it is also common notation, such as in Simulink, you'll see this denoted as g of s. And uh, to clarify, g of s refers to the transfer function, which is this entire quantity, but this denominator here, L, uh, the Laplace transform of U, is your step function. And so there are different kinds of step functions. Uh, we can have step functions, impulses, or pulses. And uh, so to give an example of what we can do now that we've arrived at a transfer function is analyze the response. And so if we assume we had a step function, uh, Laplace transform of U, would be equivalent to 1 over s. And if we now plug this value into this expression, we would be able to numerically evaluate what Laplace transform of y is, and uh, that would be equal to s times b divided by s minus a. I'm sorry, uh, what I meant to say is this is actually equal to uh, 1 over s times b over s minus a. And uh, if we know if, so if the Laplace transform of y is stable, in other words, if, sorry, <laughs> uh, if the roots of the denominator 
are less than or equal to zero, then we can apply the final value theorem and the initial value theorem to analyze, analyze, sorry, <laughs> the steady state so that would be as t goes to infinity and initial behavior so that's as t goes to zero uh, respectively and so what this means in math is applying the final value theorem to uh, Laplace transform of y is this. So in, in the frequency domain, instead of letting t go to infinity, we instead let s approach zero. So limit as s approaches zero of s times uh, y of s, and y of s is equivalent to uh, the Laplace transform of y, tells us how our system or how our output, uh, what our output will be at the new steady state after we've applied a step function perturbation to our system. And so if we wanted to evaluate what that is in this model that we have here, uh, what we would have is um, we would have the limit as s approaches zero of s over s, so this cancels to one, uh, over s minus a and s goes to zero. This tells us that our output will reach some value of the uh, coefficients b over minus a at steady state. So this will be the new steady state output value after the step perturbation. Okay, and then uh, we can also analyze what the initial behavior of our system will be by applying the initial value theorem to the uh, Laplace transform of y uh, like we did before. So because we are in the frequency domain, we will instead be taking the limit uh, as s goes to infinity as s goes to infinity of s times y of s, uh, and this is equivalent to limit as s goes to infinity of s over s, so 1 times b over s minus a, and as s goes to infinity, the denominator will dominate. Consequently, this will equal 0, and so what this tells us is that um, because we are working with deviation variables, uh, our system will uh, be at steady state because as you'll recall earlier when we were taking our Laplace transforms we said that our deviation variables were zero um, because our system we assumed our system was at steady state we see it agreeing uh, later on in the math and so uh, this concludes uh, Laplace transforms after we have uh, arrived at a um, state space model and um, a final note we can only apply final value theorem and initial value theorem to uh, stable systems so that is uh, the main criteria that I commonly forget <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.